Yeah, well, this year at the EHA and ASCO meetings, we saw the release of uh, pivotal data in relapsed and refractory large B-cell lymphoma after two prior lines of therapy. I presented the data on the glofitimab clinical trial, while Catherine Tiebelmont presented the data on the epcaritimab clinical trial. Now, it's always unwise to compare two different trials directly, uh, but there were some unmistakable similarities about the two trials. Glofitimab is an intravenously delivered bispecific antibody, which is given after a single dose of obinutuzumab, while epcaritimab is given subcutaneously. They have slightly different sequencing and a different approach to dosing, uh, but both trials presented the results of uh, just over 155, well, 155 and 157 patients, uh, and they both showed a complete remission rate of 39%, which is uh, strikingly similar. They both recruited populations of patients, roughly a third of patients that had been exposed to CAR T cells, and both of them had patients that were refractory to their prior treatments, and yet were able to produce a fairly consistent complete remission rate. And those complete remission rates were durable. Although the trials did differ with respect to their follow-up time, uh, it was, it's notable that the complete remissions were generally retained uh, by uh, both patient populations. So those findings at EHA and ASCO suggest that the bispecific antibodies will have an important role for the management of large B-cell lymphoma and that that role can extend to patients who've relapsed after CAR T cells. That's becoming increasingly important because we know that CAR T cells may move, to, move into the second line in many regions around the world. So having options for treatment upon relapse after CAR T cells is an important thing to consider. Um, now, in combination, there are a number of clinical trials that are underway and yet to report. Uh, and we've seen across the companies that are developing bispecific antibodies and indolent lymphomas and aggressive lymphomas, uh, different approaches. Uh, there are some pragmatic approaches looking to combine the bispecifics with chemotherapy and we've seen clinical trials uh, that are running and are yet to report in the second line setting uh, in the transplant ineligible population looking at uh, bispecific antibodies alone or in combination with treatments like gemcitabine and oxaliplatin um, uh, uh, and then th that combination being tested in randomized studies of, of uh, transplant ineligible patients. We've also seen uh, some interesting and tantalizing data on epcrutimab in combination with a um, more intensive cisplatin containing salvage regimen in potentially transplant eligible patients. And where that information is sort of really interesting is the complete remission rate was higher than you might have expected uh, for that population, uh, up at around 60%. And um, although that's an uncontrolled trial, it, it was interesting that the combination of bispecific antibody together with intensive salvage chemotherapy was deliverable and produced these high complete remission rates. And so that raises the question of uh, whether these combinations uh, might work well as a bridge to some further consolidation, be it autologous transplantation or something else. Um, and we've also seen the combination of bispecific antibodies in the frontline setting. And that's really interesting as well. It's very difficult to design a clinical trial in young patients where RCHOP or r policy HP might cure the, the majority of patients. It's very difficult to design a trial, but bispecifics can be added to these regimens. And we've seen data from both uh, the epcaritimab team and also the glofitimab team that suggests that RCHOP can be combined with these bispecific antibodies in the frontline setting and, and this can be deliverable and it's uh, tolerable. And we're yet to see mature efficacy data. There are a number of uh, uh, uncontrolled clinical trials that are underway at the moment, and, um, but we've seen preliminary safety data and I think uh, those combinations are promising. And then finally, I th the question is how can we uh, optimise the mechanism of action of bispecific antibodies. What, what are the rational combinations here? And uh, in follicular lymphoma, we've seen that lenalidomide in combination with bispecific antibodies is uh, tolerable and deliverable, and at least uh, in the initial data appears to be uh, highly effective. Uh, and that may be applicable in more aggressive settings as well. And there are follow-on molecules from lenalidomide, such as the cell mods, which may be promising in combination. 
And we've also seen that Roche have antibodies that look to provide a second signal by adding in a second bispecific antibody, such as 41BB ligand, that then uh, provides a co-stimulatory signal to the CAR T cell. And so those trials are underway at the moment and we look forward to those results.